Hi everyone, my name is Brian Trumley with Pixel Magic, and today I'm going to demystify to you UI table views. So let's get started. As you can see here, I've got a UI table view within a default single view application, and when you click on each one of those objects, the little blue thing disappears, and your selection is noted at the bottom. Uh, that's emulating processing that selection. Okay, so we're going to be using ARC, and we're going to be using storyboards. Inside my default view, I've created a UI table view and I've given it a, uh, a UI table view cell subclass of which I call demo cell. If you're unfamiliar with any of the concepts um, so far, then please look them up. I'm not going to explain them in this video. I'm just going to explain UI table views. Now, UI table view needs two things it needs a delegate and it needs a data delegate. So, let's go into the UI table view links here and you'll see that it's got a data source um, and a delegate as well of which they don't have to be the same entity they don't have to be the same um, object I've happened to make my view controller both of those but you can you can change that and rightfully so you'll have to implement protocols for each of those one's going to be your UI table view delegate and UI table view data source all right so my or my data source is just going to be an NS mutable array of strings, which we're going to put messages in there. So I've init my data and I'm going to set some messages here. And um, let's get to the actual UI table view methods. The first one you're going to want to implement is how many sections do you have in your table? A table is capable of having many sections. In the situation we're using it for, we're only going to have one section. Um, so we're always going to return a value of one. Um, the second one you're going to want to implement is how many rows are in each of those sections. Since we only have one section by default, we're only going to return how many rows are in the default section, in which case it's going to be the amount of objects located within the data array. Now we're going to move on to the methods that are implemented for managing the UI table view. The first one is cell for row at index path, and that's going to return to the UI table view what cell is located at its current index at the current section. So when this is loaded into memory, once it's displayed on the screen, it's going to request your its um, delegate for the cells. And um, the delegate has to supply cells. If they don't supply cells, it'll supply a nil cell, and the nil cell will crash the application because it won't know how to display it. So as you can see here, I've created a demo cell, and I've set its values and then I've returned it. A couple things I want to note here is the reuse cell with identifier method and um, the cell identifier here. And a cell, the reusable cells are, is a concept that came out um, a, a little while ago. It's actually really helpful memory management wise because you may have a table view that is you know creates lots of cells on the stack and that can take up a lot of memory a uh, lot of um, you know processing cycles very quickly so what they decided to do which was ingenious was have a pool of cells that have been allocated but are no longer being used um, and then just pull from those and then reutilize the memory space so your memory um, footprint is significantly decreased and your processing speeds go way up uh, depending on your software and how you use cells. So we're going to use that and by default uh, most code you'll see, code snippets, will we'll use that as well. But you need to provide a cell identifier and you can have multiple cell identifiers for each UI table view. In this case we're going to use demo cell, uh, simple enough, but you have to be very careful not to forget to set the reuse identifier inside of the nib as well. So you'll go to your cell and then you'll go to identifier and make sure you put the correct identifier in there as well. If you have multiple types of cells then you can set them separately. But in this case we don't. So now that uh, that's been accomplished, what we're going to do is actually try to dequeue a non-used cell. If a non-used cell does not exist, we're going to create a new one and we're going to in this case create a, a you know a default UI table view cell. And then uh, we're going to set the values and, and down here before you actually return the cells where you're going to initialize the cell um, and how the cells to appear. In this case, the only thing we have in our demo cell is a uh, UI label. We're going to set the text of that UI label to the value at um, the current data array index. There's going to be, uh, if you're not familiar with uh, NS index paths, there are 
two values return there are two values included in it there's the index path dot um, section and the index path dot row pretty self-explanatory uh, we're only really interested in the row so we're going to access our data array using that value so once that has happened the table view now is initialized and set with all the cells that are included in it it runs just fine so for instance let's go ahead and uh, comment this code out here and you'll see that the software actually does exactly what we want it to do it creates a table view it's initialized the data source and it's initialized um, the delegate it's populated uh, via the delegate the objects that are located inside of it but you see when we click on the objects nothing happens at all and the object stays selected uh, not really helpful I don't think so let's go and fix that one of the methods you can implement um, to increase the usability of your UI table views is did select row at index path that's going to return what section and what row was selected again we only have one section so row is the only um, important bit of information uh, but the first thing I want to look at is deselect row at index path and the index path passed to it and we're going to animate yes that's actually going to um, make that blue fade away and of course we're going to want to process that message and do not process if you if you are a programmer if you are an object oriented programmer in any in any way if you consider yourself a good programmer do not um, try to streamline that process within did select row at index path D don't do that move it to a separate method uh, like you should be doing for everything you should you should never have a single method do more than one thing in this case we want to move it off to a process selection method uh, and we're going to pass to it the value that we want to process in which case it's just going to be the data array object to index the row that was selected and so in this case once it's received that selection it's just going to process it and, and it's going to ns log it out to the um, the message log down there saying that that object has been selected and that will pretty much conclude the tutorial I hope you have learned a lot more about the simplicity of UI table views and how they're really not as complicated or enigmatic as they may seem before this video started the next thing I want to jump on is the cool new uh, functionality that Apple added a couple you know a while ago called collections. Collections are awesome. It's like a 2D table view cell. It's exactly what it is. So we'll jump into those next. If you have any comments or concerns, please leave them in the comments and I'll be sure to read them. Appreciate all of your inputs and take care. Happy coding.